All right, I just wanted to thank you all for coming today. You can finish to fill out the form. Um, how many of you are in Professor Don Montgomery's course? Excellent. So most of you, we have a few others, so welcome. Um, we really appreciate you guys coming out today to hear about a couple different opportunities that you can fulfill your service learning um, option if you decide to do that within your course. So we're going to go over a few things, go over a little brief overview of what service learning is to get you an idea. We also have a student here who has participated in two or three of the various programs. So we're excited to have her share a little bit about her experience um, of throughout those various programs. And then we have our lovely guest speakers that are here from the Calhoun Intermediate School District to share a little bit about each of their programs and the various opportunities within service learning. So service learning, as defined, some of you might have seen this, um, but a good overview for you guys is it combines academic study, service learning, um, engages in the community, and then that practical experience. So it gives you that hands-on opportunity to connect real-life experiences to what you're learning in the coursework. So as you're finding service learning opportunities, um, and we have developed one through the Calhoun Intermediate School District, we've been able to tie in a lot of those aspects and how it tie into your coursework. So it fits in very nicely. When you look at service learning, not only is it a benefit for you as a student as you're engaging in the community, but it's also benefiting the community partner. So there's that mutual benefit, um, as you can see in the middle where service learning is, whereas internship, it's more beneficial for the student. On the other side, volunteering, it benefits more the community partner. So service learning is in the middle where it's tied to what you're learning in your coursework and you're also benefiting the community partner but also yourself through that self-reflection piece that's tied in there as well. So why should I do service learning? This is a great question that many students might be asking. For some of you, you've been at KCC and you're about to graduate and you've got a lot going on. So what would be the benefit for me? So as you can see, there's a variety of opportunities. If you earn a service learning endorsement, so you've served 15 hours and it's got reflection pieces that are tied within your coursework, you will receive a service learning endorsement on your transcript. You can also see that if you are coming in on the 2012-2013 catalog, it's now a requirement for you if you're going to be receiving your associate degree. So sometime in your college experience at KCC, you have to complete a service learning experience. So for those of you that have been here a while, this is just a great thing that you can add to your resume. Might help you get connected into other institutions um, around the state. It is, service learning is something that um, is growing and is seen as a great benefit. So you can put it on your resume. Um, also might help you get into some of the uh, different programs at other universities. You gain career experience, also a great networking tool. Um, so a lot of the students that have participated in service learning have found uh, references, um, and Haley will speak on some of the things that she's connected with as well. So what is a service learning endorsement? What do you have to do to achieve it? So within it, each course might be different, um, but within, so most of you are in um, Professor Montgomery's course, that you will turn in a service learning forms to your instructor, um, whatever they may be, for, they might be a little bit of a difference. Um, but then you also are connecting with the community partner. So we're going to talk about the specific forms that need to be turned in for the Calhoun ISD. You serve for 15 hours. This can include some of your training. So I know that sometimes it can be overwhelming. If you have family, other commitments, you're involved in sports or athletics, other um, organizations on campus. So really being able to look at how can you frame it. Um, so 15 hours might seem like a lot, but there are aspects that are tied into like training that is incorporated into that. And then it also has reflection pieces that are facilitated by your faculty member. So it could be a presentation or other specific essay questions that go with that. So that's what would help you to receive the service learning endorsement that goes on your transcript. So without um, too much time, we're going to actually bring up our student first, um, Hallie, who has experience with some of the different organizations or programs a part of the CISD to share about some of her experience. My name is Callie Adams, and I'm a freshman here at KCC. I graduated from Marshall High School 
And um, through my senior year in high school, I got asked to join a program called Links, and we had an autistic classroom at our high school. And what it was is we weren't an aide or a teacher or something, we were just like a friend in a support system through them. And I got, there was six of us that started out in the Link program, and we went to class with them and helped them with their homework. And over time, we got really, really attached to the students, and they became our friends. And we went to movies with them and did lots of different things. So um, at that point, I decided that that's what I wanted to do, is I wanted to go into special education. So um, through the LINK program, we helped um, in the Special Olympics. And we, there was a soccer meet, and a swimming meet, and also a track meet. And that was a really cool way to get involved with them because you learn that they're just like us. They're really competitive. And if you guys are interested in sports, it's a way you can connect with similar um, enjoyments, I guess, or hobbies. And also, I was in Mr. Montgomery's class last semester, and I did the ATP program, which was here at Cal Community College. And I had two students, Brittany and Alec. Well, they, are they going to be here sometime? <laughs> They're in the back. <laughs> and we did recycling around campus. And so every, I did it on Wednesdays. And every Wednesday morning, we would walk around campus and pick up recycling. And it was a really easy way to, because you think 15 hours is a long time, you know, especially for college students who are busy. But it was a really easy way to fit it into your schedule because I just did it before my first class, so I just came a little early. It was really fun. We got really close. <laughs> Yeah, it's really awesome. fun and oh also like I said I'm going to be a teacher and so everything like I don't know how many of you guys want to be teachers or anything but um you have to have so many like classroom experiences and stuff so right now I'm like volunteering at my old high school with classroom work so you can really relate <coughs> it to your career like if you know what you want to go into and stuff to help connect with that. So thanks for See, sometimes students get involved in it, and it's something that um, Hallie had, might not have saw how impactful it was to her, and then also seeing um, that this is something that she's passionate about. So was able to see those benefits and wanted to continue to serve. Um, and this year she's completing 300 hours of service as a part of the Mayor Corps program um, to continue to serve and give back um, through that. So now we're going to share a little bit of each of the, there's four different programs that you can get um, connected into and they kind of overlap in different ways. Um, but we wanted to bring in the Calhoun Intermediate School District to have them share about those experiences. So we're going to have Sarah House come up and speak about the first one or two. It's just this one. My name is Sarah House and I am a teacher at the Doris Clausen Developmental Center. And um, I'm going to actually be up here twice because I sort of play two roles, have two hats, um, like a lot of us do. But right now we'll talk about the um, opportunities um, through the Doris Clausen Developmental Center. And I'm going to hit on um, one or two, uh, or one of them, and then we're going to get a couple more up here of the people to talk about the other ones. But um, the DKDC, the top one, in-building classrooms, um, Doris Clausen is over um, off of Raymond Road on Jameson, so it's about two and a half, three miles from here, so we're not very far <coughs> down Nemeth. Um, and we service students who are um, from all Calhoun counties. So we service students from Olivet, from Tecantia, Marshall, um, all the school districts that are in Calhoun County, we service students from those um, school districts. The students who come to our school all have uh, cognitive impairments. Um, some have physical impairments as well. So, um, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, so, um, but that's in the building. And then we have the adult training program, which is housed at Harper Creek, but we have a classroom that's here that um, Haley was speaking about that she's involved in. So we'll talk about that. And then we have the ATP classrooms that are at Harper Creek, so we'll talk about that. And then the Special Olympics are all opportunities um, for you guys to be a part of. So I'm going to talk first more about what's available at the Clausen Center. At Clausen Center, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classrooms, nine classrooms now. And then we have nursing um, students, like medical, we have some nursing students that come from KCC. And then um, we have OT students, and we have adaptive PE as well. Um, it's going to vary by semester as to how many opportunities are, are, are available at Clawson for volunteering. 
but they, and it's going to vary by depending on classroom as to what kind of activities you're going to do. Uh, the SXI students, um, SXI is students with um, severe multiple impairments. Most of those students are in wheelchairs. Uh, most of those students are nonverbal. They have um, more physical needs. They um, have feeding needs and that kind of thing. And so, and when they do activities, they need more um, one one on one or hand over hand um, participation or instruction. So there's that kind of um, opportunities. The SCI students are um, a classrooms for students with severe cognitive impairments. Um, those students are more mobile. They can move around and walk, and some of them are pretty active. Uh, so some of us helping out with those um, type things. Some of them still need assistance with feeding and still need some um, assistance with activities. So you can help out with those. Um, activities might be um, doing a math thing. It might be doing um, an art, art activity, that kind of stuff. It just really depends. Um, and then most side is students with moderate cognitive abilities. Um, and those students, again, are mobile. And those students have a little bit more verbal skills than the other students do. But the other students also are using communication devices to assist with them and stuff. So there's a lot of, um, I think a lot of things that you guys could experience by coming in and volunteering. So, and all, all those classrooms could, would love to have you know, one volunteer or so. Um, OT um, does um, occupational therapy. They work on fine motor <coughs> skills, but they could also, like, you know, if you wanted to come in and see about making some equipment or making something for a student specific, then you might not, if you aren't really wanting to work with students directly, you could come in and be like, hey, how can I help adapt something? And you can work on that for your 15 hours. Um, we also have a stu uh, uh, adult um, adaptive PE, or physical education. Um, we are in our, we have a pool at our school, and we're in the pool three days a week. And we can always use more assistance in the pool, helping out with you know, assisting kids with swimming. They all wear flotation devices, so they're not going to drown down here or anything like that. But, uh, but this helps getting them, you know, in the pool, active and participating and doing things in the pool. Um, are some, I have some opportunities there with the class and stuff. So, um, but I would agree that I think the one thing that I, the reason I wanted to special ed too is to serve, like, the more you give back, you give to them, they give back, and they're really, it's a fun group of kids. They're a fun group of students. And so, I think if you came to class, you'd have a really good time. <coughs> And now Joanne is going to come up. Joanne, Thank Joanne. You. <laughs> I don't even make her. Hello, my name is Joanne Joy. I'm a transition coordinator for the adult training program. Over and here. Over. Forward the slide. Yeah. There you go. I'm just going to talk for a few minutes really quickly about what the ATP program is as a whole within the calendar Immediate school district. It's a transitional program for young adults that want further education and training in all different areas of transition. And those four areas being adult living, community participation, um, employment, or other post-secondary education training, which could be a trade school, you know, perhaps going to community college, or um, you know, some other vocational um, training. The students that are in our program have either cognitive impairment and or are students with autism or they have a <coughs> diagnosis where they fall somewhere along the autism spectrum disorder. The goal of ATP is to transition each student into his or her community as, as fully and as independently as they are able to be. So what we do is we work on a few different areas. Curriculum, community work-based learning, um, micro-enterprises, and community-based instruction, which we call CBI, which is two days a week they go out into the community, whether it be shopping or to the grocery store to make purchases, restaurant, banking, um, library, whatever um, you know is out there in the community. So my job as a transition coordinator is I work with a lot of community agencies, whether it be community mental health, being some point. Um, other uh, nonprofit agencies in the community to help with participation, um, social rec opportunities. And our goal is that our job is to connect each student with these resources so that when they're done with school, they are as independent as possible, but yet they're living fulfilling, busy lives when they're all done with school. <clears throat> and I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, but the students in our program go to 26 years old. Um, so they may be in our program for a few years, or they could be you know, in our program from 19 to 26 years old. It just depends on what their goals are and where they are 
in transitioning it all for those areas. Okay? So yeah. That was the, our program in a nutshell. And now one of our teachers is going to come up and talk more about um, our program and our peer to peer opportunities. <coughs> And it started with uh, Don Montgomery actually taking the psychology students to the Doris Clausen Center, and that had been going on for quite a few years, I believe. Um, then the idea came to say, what if we could, you know, have some of the Clausen students come to campus? And so that it kind of goes both ways. So that's where the idea came, and so this is our fourth year that um, I've been on campus with students. Um, each year I have different students, so um, I have four of my students in the back who waved earlier. Um, so the, the collaboration um, is that the students are here and they're here to work. Uh, so this is their employment piece of their transition. So I have created jobs on campus um, that no one else was kind of completing. So the students work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday mornings here on campus. Uh, the collaboration comes is that I look for KCC students to be their job coaches so that you will get service learning um, credit or just volunteer experience by working with the students. So it's twofold. You'd be a, a job coach and you'd have responsibilities of explaining to them how to do their job. You'd be um, supervising them for their safety. Uh, but you'd also be working on social skills. You'd be more like a mentor as well. Um, the uh, adult age is very uh, like what um, the KCC students are, and so it works really nice. So some of the areas that my students work in, uh, physical therapy, the dental, right here in the theater, um, uh, the library, the Ruin Cafe. Uh, so you've probably already seen them uh, around <coughs> this. We're just going to start working next week. I still have some opportunities left, so if anybody is still looking for um, an opportunity to do service learning, one nice thing about this is that it's right here on campus. So you won't have to um, go somewhere else. So it kind of depends on your schedule. If you have a bigger chunk of time, you know, I encourage you to do some of the, the Special Olympics of the peer mentoring so that um, they can get involved in that. Um, I would need just a commitment of an hour and a half, but it would be every week for the semester. So even if you met your 15 hours, you wouldn't just be done. You'd have to you know, go for the whole semester. But it's an hour and a half a week. What I'm specifically looking for yet now, I have kind of the other slots filled. If you have time Monday or Wednesday morning, one of those two times, between 8.30 and 10. And you would have a regular time frame. You'd have two students with you working with the whole semester um, in that in the capacity of the job coach. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Sada. I'm another teacher um, with the adult training program as well. Um, my part of it with the links and the peer-to-peer -peer is a new opportunity. Um, it, I got started with this with Elizabeth O'Leary, um, our behavior specialist. Um, as Hallie touched on, she worked with the students in Marsha, that, um, students with um, autism spectrum disorder, that were high school students. Well, they then, some of them come on to me um, in that 19 through 26 age group um, with the adult training program. And the opportunity, we still, we, we didn't have that opportunity. And so in collaboration with talking with Elizabeth and some of the other staff, looked at how can we help all of our 19 through 26 year old students still working with that socialization um, and having age appropriate uh, role models in which they can have that opportunity to socialize. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, we go to our work sites. There is an opportunity on Monday or Wednesdays if someone is interested in um, that area. But Thursdays and Fridays is the primary area in which we're out in the community. Um, we're doing things such as cooking and shopping. We go to the YMCA. We also had the opportunity to go to um, the K-Wings game, which is a perfect, perfect social opportunity in which Friends can get together. They can go down and get their their drinks and their um, popcorn or whatever it is that they you know wanted to purchase. So those opportunities for doing friend age appropriate things are there. And again, we're building it, um, and it's kind of a little more flexible. Um, and so if you're interested, in, it's something that that we would be building with you as well. <coughs> Uh, a lot of you guys have heard about Special Olympics. Special Olympics 
campuses around the United States, around the world. They're having actually World Winter Games in Korea right now, or in February. So Special Olympics is huge. Special Olympics is uh, a way for individuals with cognitive impairments to be involved in some sports. Currently in Calhoun County, the way Special Olympics is run is we go through the schools a lot of time um, for training and then um, all of our meets, track meets, swim meet, um, bowling, uh, soccer are done during the during a school day. So, but what we've started and where we could do some help is um, on Wednesday afternoons we have practices at the Claussen Center from three to four for those students who have already graduated from schools or who um, the schools don't have um, ability to get scores and times and that kind of thing. It's, 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 it is a very competitive thing. It's not just like oh look at these cute kids playing games. I mean it's a pretty competitive thing. For our track and field, we um, have 200 athletes that come out for track and field on that day. Um, and myself and one other person, Marsha, organizes the whole thing. So we could use help organizing, we could use help um, coaching. Uh, we can, you know, so we have to get times on Wednesday afternoons. Um, the other thing is um, Special Olympics is a nonprofit organization, so we're always doing fundraisers. So we could always use help out with organizing our fundraisers. We have the Polar Plunge coming up in March. We have a golf outing in June. Um, we also have an area management team that meets about once every other month. So it actually meets about four times a year, um, four to five. And so uh, and that meets at Clawson usually on a Wednesday evening at five o'clock. So we can help out with that. Um, as I say, we're only currently offering four sports. The amount of sports that are available to part for kids, students to participate or athletes to participate in in Special Olympics is like, I think like 40 or so. Like they have um, poly hockey, they have winter sport games, they have basketball, uh, they have um, bocce, which we don't do for track and field. But there's a lot of different opportunities. We just don't have the volunteers to help um, do those types of games. So um, if you have any interest at any point, you know, whether it be one hour or 15 hours or 30 hours at all with Special Olympics, um, let me know because we really just need people to help out uh, organizing this and help this, the athletes out and that kind of thing. So that uh, kind of wraps up the different opportunities and you can see that there are a variety of ways that you can get involved through different aspects that you have for your aspirations and your career goals. Um, but also in hobbies, if you're involved in sports or you like to do some of those things or you like to organize and plan, there's opportunities to get involved. And we're very excited about our connection and collaboration with the CISD. Um, they provide a lot of opportunities for our students with service learning. And our students continue to come back and want to serve in more ways. So that just shows um, the opportunities that they have placed to not only have you help them, but to also help you grow as well. So we're excited to continue to build those collaborations. How many of you, just by a show of hands, are thinking about doing a service learning opportunity? Excellent. So now it's kind of the step, we've heard about opportunities, so what do I do um, to get connected and involved with these programs? So how do you apply? So we put it on the slide, but the forms of, of initiating doing a service learning project. So in order to get involved in a service learning project, you connect with your faculty member who will also help you through the process. So with this, we have um, contact uh, Mr. Montgomery, or if you're here from another class, to contact them, um, and then also myself if you need help with the form. So there's forms that talk about expectations um, and laying that out of what you'll be doing, um, also tying in your career aspirations so that they can have focus um, of helping you as you're helping them as well. So there's a forms that you will fill out that the CISD will sign for whoever, um, pro whichever program that you're working with. And then you'll return those back to your faculty member. There's also forms that you have to complete with the Calhoun ISD. And we will be sending those information. That's why it's vital that you fill out this form um, with your KID number so that we can send you that email um, with that information as well. Um, and then also if you have your course, if it's not on there, the specific section would be helpful as well. So by filling this out, we'll get you in contact. Um, you'll fill out a Calhoun ISD form um, so that they have information on that and they also fill out a background check so that will initiate the process. The sooner we can get those in and filled out, the better um, because let me tell you, semesters happen and life happens and at the end you're trying to cram in 15 hours if you're doing it for the endorsement, why not happen? 
So do it this week um, is vital in getting that form filled out. So returning those forms and getting them turned in, um, you can turn those into me and I'll make sure they get to the Calhoun ISD um, or you can send them directly. So those are the ways of the two or three forms that you will need to be filled out to get it initiated um, and working. So this is just um, a quote to kind of inspire. So civilization is to survive. We must cultivate the science of human relations, the ability of all people, of all kinds to live together in the same world at peace. Um, so really thinking and reflecting that you guys, by participating in a service learning course, it's benefiting you, but it's also helping our community. So really being able to engage in the things that you're learning in your class and the social issues that are taking place, um, to be a part of something bigger and, and to create change. So thank you for those of you that are really interested in, in all the things that you guys are doing in your community through that. Um, also, we have information on our Facebook page. We'd love to have more friends added to that that will send more information about one-time opportunities um, as well. Does anybody have any questions that we can answer for you while they're here for initially? You think it's an easy question? There might be five other people asking the same thing. So if you have any questions, too, um, they will be here for a couple moments after, so please Feel free to contact them. Um, they're also flexible in helping to find something that would be a good fit for you. So we're excited um, for this collaboration, and thank you guys so much for coming up today. Um, and feel free to contact me as well if you have any questions. Hey guys, the basket goes slippy. You need to be sure and turn those in. See, we've got a basket here. You can just make your way and be sure you drop those in that way you get credit for it. Enjoy the warm weather before it gets cold.